that's the word I was grasping for. Uh, yeah, probably. Our last uh, budget hearing of the day is the county councilor, and I may make a note that after uh, the county councilor's presentation, uh, Betty Griner, our financial administrator, is going to go over uh, the budget worksheet that we're going to be using as we work to uh, pass a final budget in August. So I wanted to mention that also. And uh, let's get started. I couldn't help but notice, and Megan has pointed this out to me, that some of the other part of my heads have prepared very nice spreadsheets and PowerPoints. And I looked at my budget, and it's 96% labor. Uh, one third of which is in front of you right now. So I figured maybe that would not be quite as helpful as the time it would take to make that. So our budget is flat except for uh, the step increase that we were told to put in it. And other than that, it's the same as it's always been. I will say we have a two challenges ahead of us. The biggest one is the turmoil in turmoil it might not be a strong enough word that's occurring at CODA slash BODA. Um, traditionally that has been uh, one attorney has handled that um, and that is uh, this year Ashley who you all know. Um, the legislature dramatically changed the law. They got mad at the counties because we were winning too many cases if I can be polite about it um, and they have changed everything and CODA itself, and I guess actually it's BODA as of now, or January 1? It's Board of Tax Appeals. Board of Tax Appeals, yeah, right. For, uh, the, the, for everybody listening at home. That out. Um, this is, if you do not like the value that the county has placed upon your property, residential or commercial, you can appeal it, and if you appeal it long enough, eventually you end up at the Board of Tax Appeals. Traditionally, it's, it was the board back when I was doing it full-time back in the 90s, and then in the 2000s, it changed to CODA, and it became more and more like a district court as they had bought into the word court uh, that the legislature changed it to. And finally, it got to the point where um, the court of tax appeals was only allowing attorneys to do various things, which I personally had no problem with. It's kind of an employment uh, bill for us. But um, the taxpayers, particularly a couple in particular, had enough, and they had enough clout to get the legislature to change the law. What we've been finding out in this last week or two is that CODA, BODA, is not very happy about it, and they're going to take it out on everybody. Uh, so they had a bunch of new regulations that are coming down that seem to be work intensive for us. And uh, the one thing that the legislature did do that I do not think was helpful at all is that you can have a full-blown hearing in front of CODA and traditionally then you appealed that and there was that was your evidentiary hearing. Well now they've allowed if you don't like your BOTA result you can ask for another full evidentiary hearing in front of the district court. So we might have to try the same case twice um, and we're still dealing with the ramifications of that. But I, I suspect, I actually I pretty much know that uh, that's going to bleed over from my one full-time attorney to more than her. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting in with her on a deposition tomorrow morning, um, and I suspect that a couple of those cases that she has are going to leak mm -hmm. out to the staff and I who traditionally don't handle CODA because the workload's just becoming more and more. So that's, that is probably the number one challenge we're going to face uh, in the next year that we can foresee. Quick question. Uh, what is the county counselor's role vice the county appraiser's role in going to the Board of Tax Appeals? Well, it, it, I, I guess I yeah. thought that was the appraiser's the, job is to go represent the county as far as hearings go in, in Board of Tax Appeals. Work. Right. In, in we do allow, we being the county, not we the counselor, we the county do allow the appraisers to do a lot of their work without representation. Uh, and I would actually say the bulk of it is without representation. But when the other side hires a tax representative and an attorney, um, that's just beyond their scope. And, and uh, we, we can't ask them to do that. So you'll see us 
litigating like the Hy-Vee grocery stores, Best Buy, Kmart, those types of businesses where you'll see my office getting involved. Um, it, it's kind of a, it's, it's different than our normal litigation. It's dramatically different in that it has its own self-contained rules, but by statute, a, a county appraiser is to seek fair market value right. and nothing else. Not an advocate for anything else but fair market value. CODA slash BODA is charged statutorily with the same thing, just to find fair market value. But, and I'm not saying this negatively because if, if I was in their situation, I would be the exact same way. The taxpayer tries to get the lowest possible value without regard to fair market value. And, and like I said, I don't mean that negatively. Uh, so it, it's kind of a, a weird system and uh, we, the county, answer to the state. We're overseen by state property valuation division. They assign us a number about how well we do with our appraisals. Mm -hmm. What they do is they watch for properties that sell, and when it sells, they compare it to what it, we had it appraised at. And Mr. Hickson and his department are always in the high 90s. Uh, so they do a very good job, and that carries over to our Coda Boda performance. Uh, but some people don't like being in the high 90s. They would like their value lower than that, as is their right. Um, the problem is, and I don't see that as a problem. The problem is, is when the legislature gets involved and decides to weight everything against us, even though the Constitution demands fair market value. And that's what we've seen the last two years, is the legislature not really caring about fair market value, uh, which is disconcerting. Do you, do you see your role uh, being limited to just commercial property? For the most part, okay. yes. Yeah. We rarely do anything with residentials, okay. my office. Because uh, in, in that situation, it's homeowner and appraiser. There's no heavy hitters. There's no attorneys. There's no tax representatives. It's more fair, mano y mano, if that makes sense. Right. So we don't get involved with, in residentials unless there's a super unique situation that might cause us to think that it could go to a to an appeal something like that and that rare i can't even remember the last time that happened okay you said there were two challenges that's one weeds i i don't know why my office is in it <laughs> but uh, i don't think you want me mowing parcels so any help you can give me um, i'm actually going to make an argument for brian cole here but I would really like to see his mowing duties put back into his budget, uh, the correction budget. Um, it's, it's, we're the county. We get properties that we shouldn't have to, but we do. We're the stopgap. We're the last line in the chain. And uh, the ones that are inside the city limits, they cause us great difficulties. Um, we have politely asked Parks and Rec to help us. They politely declined. We've asked Public Works politely. They've politely declined. We're down to Rich Eckert and his Craftsman 52-inch mower. And I don't think you pay me to do that. Also, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what else to do. I'm kind of stuck. We, we have one property that apparently the city mowed, and they're going to charge us 300 bucks for that. That just came through today. 271, but who's counting? Well, yeah. Yeah, <coughs> we thought we had it mowed, by the way. I we know. thought we had it scheduled. I so I don't know. We're investigating how it slipped through the crack. We're going to find out what happened, and maybe we do owe the money. Um, but then again, I don't have the budget for that. It wasn't in Brian's budget either. No. No. Um, uh, questions for the county councilor? Well, kind of on those that line. So the city has two of those work crews, though. So are they assisting within city limits of, of mowing? Yeah, city pays for those. Okay, yeah. so I, I know, I know. So I'm confused. You said there was a property within city limits that then we got charged for? Right, code compliance went out and mowed it, which is a different entity inside the city. They didn't have their work crews? No. Way. Well, I, I, that I don't know. All I know is that their standard charge is what we got charged with. I, I will say on another piece of property that we got a notice on, we had um, Schindel, who does some mowing for Parks and Rec to mow it, and they charged us $100 for that. That's a property I'm hoping to be able to sell for 50 bucks at the next sale bid tax sale. So have we called Mr. Colson's office to see? Um, has we just got it. like ha I just yeah. saw it like a half hour ago. Yeah. Okay. I hadn't seen it. It is hot off the press. I had not seen it. <laughs> 
I, I was going to make a, a phone call to the county. I was going to make a speech about weeds anyway, and that just happened to show up right before I walked down here. Okay. How many have we had? How many parcels have we had to deal with outside of city limits, Topeka? Well, we've had three properties we got notices from from the city yeah. that we've had to deal with. Those are the ones we worry about. The ones but that are inside city limits. city limits. Mm -hmm. yeah. But outside city limits, have we received any, I mean, have we received any notices on them? Well, there would be no one to give us notices. What, we, what would commonly happen would be that the neighbors complain right. about mm -hmm. the neighbor who's not pulling their fair civil share. Um, and in the past, we've not only been able to, to mow those after a bit of due process, but get our money back by putting it against as a lien against the property taxes. And um, unfortunately, the the Kansas Court of Appeals put the smack down on that with an opinion that reeks of them not knowing what home rule authority means, but that's just my private thought. So we're dealing with that. We actually introduced legislation that would fix that case last year, and uh, the Kansas Livestock Association and Farm Bureau killed it. And we're actually trying to set up a meeting with those two entities here in the next couple weeks to see if we can come to a compromise. Hopefully we can and get that, get that authority back. That, that, that authority would be helpful not only in the county, we could use it in the city as well. Um, it, it dramatically changed the game. So they got but they, did they get in the tax sale then? Did they, they are get sold? Be they are going to be. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? Oh, not, not right now. Okay. Commissioner Cook. Outside council. It's not listed on your budget. Who pays it? Special liability fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll and be it'll be less next year by quite a bit. Do you have a recommendation? I mean you say quite a bit less. I mean, so we have an idea of what the budget it's entirely dependent upon how many times we get sued, and that's something that we don't really control. Okay. Um, for everybody listening at home, my office handles in-house the vast majority of these cases, dozens and dozens. I, we have the numbers if you want to see them, but, and we have handle complicated cases. We've, we've handled wrongful death cases in my office before. But every now and then, there comes a case that is so big, there's just no way we can handle it. And that's when we go to outside counsel. We're down now to one active case that's with outside counsel. And that's the wrongful death at the jail. Aaron Sebia is the name of the plaintiff. <coughs> however, Lopez. that's... Oh, it's Lopez? Aguiar. Okay, yeah, Aguiar. Uh, however, that's the single most expensive case we've ever litigated in the history of Shawnee County, by far. <laughs> And it's ongoing. We're not even to the end of discovery. Discovery ends in September, I believe. So uh, that's the case that's, that's driving this budget. No other cases with outside counsel. And as a matter of fact, we actually took one outside counsel case and brought it back inside. We're handling a wrongful death at the jail right now that we've brought back inside. Okay. Well, again, just so we can, as we go through our other funds that are not within this but our ancillary too. Yeah, I, I think for the special liability fund, we're recommending was it four hundred thousand? Four hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. And, and see, that's not just attorneys' fees. That's the actual fund that we pay out if, in fact, we believe we need to settle a case, hit with a civil fine and or uh, award. It, it does more than just attorneys' fees. That's when we sell cases. That's where it's paid from. But we haven't replenished it in several years, from what I recall. And so now it's it's time to put I think it, the number was 400,000 400, in for 2015. Yeah, we so. we've been very lucky mm -hmm. slash good because I think I do think it's a combination mm -hmm. of both mm -hmm. in how we spend our legal money. Uh, we win a lot of cases uh, and we settle some cases for I think very good numbers. I, I wouldn't bring them to you if I didn't mm -hmm. think they were good. Mm -hmm. uh, but at some point in time it, it does exhaust and that's where we're at now. Over the last year, you did some lobbying on behalf of Shawnee County, but also in conjunction with the Kansas uh, 
County Councilor or County Commissioners Association. KAC, County Association of Counties, would be the umbrella organization for all that. I know that that was the, you know, the first time that they had engaged you as their, I mean, the lobbyist for that. I mean, is that anticipated to continue? Is that something that we can look at? Again, as we turn over every stone that's possibly there, is that a possible service that we can provide to other counties, Jackson, Jefferson, Wabansi, Potawatomi, that are smaller counties that maybe don't have the ability to afford the caliber of legal counsel that we have in Shawnee County? Well, that's what, that is the prime purpose of KAC. Um, they provide, and that stands for the Kansas Association of Counties, they have um, two full-time lawyers, both of which are also registered lobbyists. Their uh, president, Randall Allen, is a registered lobbyist. And they are constantly having to weigh the needs of 99 small counties and six larger counties, because we don't always align with one another. Um, and I think it's fair to say that they do the best that they can and if push comes to shove, and I have no problem with this, they probably look out for the 99 counties because the rest of us are big boys and we can handle our own business. Uh, in fact, Wyandotte has a full-time lobbyist. Uh, and Johnson County and Sedgwick both employ contract lobbyists. So, th and by the way, I think that line have, of work has done nothing but increase every single year in my office. It's more and more and more. And this year was bigger than last year, and that was bigger than the year before. Um, I, get, I get asked a fair amount. We're, we're kind of the county on the spot because the capital's here. Mm -hmm. So we'll get, Mark Hickson will get asked. Tom Block will get asked. We'll get asks from KAC, hey, say, how does this work? And I think we do a pretty good job of handling that added workload. Um, but the asks that I get are greater than the time that I have. And there have been a couple times I've been asked to come testify, and I just simply don't have the time. But how I do that is I weigh it, the importance of the issue. Because some of them aren't going to pass. They're just, some of these are so ridiculous. We're going to get a hearing, it's a circus, and then it goes away. And I'm not going to test, I'm not going to be part of those circuses. So those are the ones I shove to the side. But the ones that might have a little traction, I spend a great deal of time on. The city of Topeka has their own lobbyist. Um, should Shawnee County be looking at hiring out lobbying so that we can have a person do that as opposed to having it done in-house with our county counselor? Here, here's my answer. The city has a contract lobbyist and each every so often they go out for bid and they get their bids in and I don't know how they pick but um, they do. And I have a, a hard time, 90% of that person, 90% 90, 90 of that person is doing the same thing that the League of Kansas Municipalities is doing. And if we hired the same full-time lobbyist, I don't know that we would get better service than we do through KAC. I think the better way to go is if we identify a super need, and maybe even capitalize that, super need, mm -hmm. bridge, um, there's two I can think of, that perhaps we should contract with a specific lobbyist one that we think has a degree of success with the present administration mm -hmm. as opposed to bidding it out and give them that one task. Uh, I think that would be the way to go. And I mean, I just look at every moment that draws you away from your office, the county's losing out on. And if we can maximize you know, our resources, looking at that and making sure that we're getting the biggest bang for our buck. Good point. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, anything else? Well, speaking of time, just the amount of time you're spending on legal, or not legal, real estate, um, building, property, all that sort of thing. Any, any comments on that? I mean, it's brought it up in a couple of other yeah. department budget Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big part of what I do at the current moment is, uh, as you know, looking at our real estate needs and trying to find things that fit. Um, I want to be careful, though, because if I shove off too much stuff, you might start wondering what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you but if I get rid of the lobbying and the real estate, yeah. I you got a pretty might actually use my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you got a pretty extensive list here, Rich, but I'm, I mean, I know that has taken up a good deal of time. Yeah, it, it has uh, quite a bit of time, actually, and uh, I'm hopeful that mid-2016, a lot of this will be off the plate that I do, but I mean, all three of you know my position. I think we need a uh, some sort of a building trade person, building engineer, whatever you want to say, that's full time to look after our stuff. Um, right now, it's disjointed. Um, I, the person who looks after the courthouse isn't the same person who looks after the elections annex or the north annex. I mean, it just—I don't think there's one person that has the good of the whole county in their heart. To provide a theme, so to speak. Uh, right now, it's disjointed, and some things are getting priority over others. And um, I mean, it's a it's a Machiavellian way of doing things, but I don't know that it's the best way. Well, I would agree. I, I don't think it's the best way. I think we've had examples in the past that have been better. I think we could come up with something mm -hmm. that will take care of space needs now but also look to the future of what kind of space needs we we have um, you know in the next five to ten years but um, I know I know that that's mm. still a priority for me especially this year to figure out facilities and facilities management and how we do that and where that comes into the budget well so. on the on the elections annex we're lucky in that Andrew how uh, he can absorb some of the burden and he actually has mm -hmm. some expertise in that field so he's been very helpful so far Good. Um, but you know, if we're going to do a $45 million project at the Expo Center, I mean, I think that's yeah. going to be beyond anything I can do. It's going to be anything beyond what HR Cook can do. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's actually a situation where we might actually hire somebody just for that job oh. mm -hmm. as, a con as a contract person mm -hmm. to be our eyes and ears on that project. I think that'd be money well spent on something that big. But if we had that person in house, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? Mm. Um, I can't think of anything offhand. Um, just keep up the good work. It's, it's much appreciated. So. Thank you, sir. All right. Oh, and I do want to say uh, Megan does a lot of work and does it really well, and I really appreciate her. Okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Did you get now that? Now it's recorded. <laughs> yeah. I was making sure. All right. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Megan. Thanks, Megan. See ya. Thank you. And now, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Take me just a minute.